Do you live in a world filled with corporate data? Are you plagued by silo departments? Are your lackluster growth strategies demolishing your chances for success? Are you held captive by the evil menace, Lord Lack? Lack of time, lack of strategy, and lack of the most important and powerful tool in your superhero tool belt, knowledge. Never fear, hub heroes. Get ready to don your cape and mask, move into action, and become the hub hero your organization needs. Tune in each week to join the League of Extraordinary Inbound Heroes as we help you educate, empower, and execute. Hub Heroes, it's time to unite and activate your powers. Before we begin, we need to disclose that Devin is- No, nope, he's not here. We don't have to listen to that crap today. Devin <laughs> no is Devin. not on the- Oh, oh, but we could have played it or should have played it because we do have Jack Cooper Smith mm. back. Anyway, Liz, go ahead. Sorry. My bad. How dare I know? Dang God. You. How <sighs> dare you? I'm just kidding. Hi, I'm a, I'm in a great mood today. So I may or may not be a little less prickly than usual. Oh, nice. We will find out. Nice. We will find out. Jack, maybe it's because you're here and your big smile. Jack Cooper Smith is back in the <laughs> house from HubSpot. Everybody, can we get some applause, please, George? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's hot. Yeah. Oh, wrong button. Guess what? <laughs> Who has two thumbs, speaks limited French, and had no freaking idea how dazzling and exciting and in-depth our last conversation was going to be about HubSpot's newest pub, HubSpot Commerce Hub. Was that Hubs me? It Hubs was me. HubSpot. HubSpot Commerce Hubs. HubSpot Commerce Hub. <laughs> I'm just so excited. No, we had, if, you, if you've been listening for any length of time, it wasn't too long ago that we had Jack on to talk about... HubSpot Commerce Hub. There we there go. There you go. That was That's better. That's called pronunciation. Yeah, that was way better Elocution. that time. <laughs> yeah. It's Friday afternoon when we're recording this. We're getting what we're getting. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. That's it is true. a special Friday afternoon, however. Uh -oh. you wonder it what is? happened. Wonder what happened yesterday? Uh -oh. What happened yesterday? HubSpot finally followed me on TikTok. Hey! <laughs> not the not the random applause I wanted. There we go. There we go. go. It finally hey, happened. Max. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. It only took it only took about a solid year of just um, begging them on every social post they did to finally do it, and they did it. Well, so there you go. So you only had Good to move. leave HubSpot to get followed by HubSpot, correct? Is my Which is ironic because they followed me to TikTok. If you really think about it, Ooh. because I was I was the presence there before they ever had one. So the presence. Glad they finally That's recognized right. it. Yeah. yeah. Come mm -hmm. on, really come on, Sprocket. Oh my god. Hey, speaking of well, which, Liz, Liz, let's get specific. Get on them though. Get on them. Let's let's get specific though, because if you're listening to this and you're like, wait, Jack was on episode. Oh, I wanted to get yeah, into that. Episode fifty six. Yep. Episode fifty six yep. is what they can go back to. Yeah. So episode fifty six, we opened the door to what we thought we knew it was going to be a detailed discussion. We knew that there were some fun nuances that we were going to be talking about, but we opened the door. We ripped open the lid on a Pandora's box of exciting questions and thoughts and ideas and all of the potential with Commerce Hub. So this is part two of that conversation. You don't have to have listened to the first part, but definitely cue it up afterward. But we've brought you back, Jack. You are back to help us get a little bit more tactical, a little bit more granular about what are some of the most exciting features and capabilities that HubSpot's Commerce Hub has to offer. So George, Max, Jack, are you excited? Let's do it. Couldn't be more excited. This is okay, I'm so, so stoked. A big question, big, big, big. What are the mindsets organizations need to have when building a great CPQ? And for those who are not familiar with CPQ, that means configure, price, and quote process within HubSpot. Let's talk mindsets. Then we'll go tactics. I like it. I like it. Good way to kick us off, Liz. And Liz, Max, George, thanks again for having me. Also, didn't realize that you all had had this many episodes already. That's awesome. Me neither. Looking forward to maybe being on like 150, 250, 350. There we after go. This, Let's go. Welcome to episode 61, keep, keep Cupcakes. Yeah, I would have spot <laughs> payments go. starts taking Bitcoin and stuff. Like all that. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> oh, snap. We'll see. 
Yeah, you I'm going to go ahead and get that that's not now. Can you can you go ahead and send me that quote in Dogecoin, please? <laughs> yes, easy. <laughs> Imagine I drew that. a picture of a stick figure. I've made it an NFT. Can I pay my retainer with that? Oh, Thank you. those will be the days. Is Dogecoin still a thing? Is Dogecoin Guys, we're already thing? off the rails. Chat, no. Bubby, <laughs> talk to us mindset. about mindset. Let's chat mindset. Let's chat mindset. So, uh, again, great to be back. Really appreciate you all having me, of course. When it comes to mindset on the quote to cash or configure price quote side of things specifically, in so many of the conversations that I've had, I've spoken with you know, founders and you know, other small businesses, medium-sized businesses that think for some reason they either need to have like 15 different tools to manage this or need to have this giant, unbelievably complex thing to send along to their buyer in order to purchase. And so if I were to dumb it down, I would say simplify is going to be the way to go on so many fronts, George. George like hates you may that agree word. On that. So, like, in so, many, so the average transaction on the quote to cash side of things right now takes about five tools. I think it really should just take one, like yeah. a single quote. It doesn't need to be that complicated. So folks are doing things like creating a doc in Word and then turning it into DocuSign to then get signed. And then they're going into their accounting system and creating an invoice and then be like, wait, did we send that invoice or was the accountant on vacation that day? And then once it's actually sent, did they actually pay the invoice? You're just jumping between so many things. And while I do totally recognize that some companies need to have a pretty comprehensive process on this, let's be real. I imagine most companies are not selling to Walmart, for example, where they need to have this giant legal contract with all this back and forth. And so we can definitely get into the weeds more on this front, but I'd say it's so much more complicated than it needs to be. You can just get paid on your quote and sign that quote and then call it a day and focus your time on making your customers actually happy as opposed to jumping between all these different hoops and all these different platforms and creating this 50 page legalese document. Uh, I think it can just be a lot simpler. So simplify would be my recommendation. God, I love this so much. Like, I, I mean, as organizations, <laughs> it's so funny because we work so hard on the marketing. We work so hard on the sales pitch and like the strategies and all of that. And we, we work so hard in production to make the best product that we can ship them. And then we get to the point where they have to pay us and we're like, and let's add in a copious amount of buyer repellent. So you have to jog a mile, <laughs> jump through three hula hoops and stand on one toe for 15 minutes to be able to pay me and ship that check through the mail. No, come on. We're yeah. anti-buyer repellent. Oh my yeah, God. We want to avoid buyer, buyer repellent as much I as love possible. That that this is like the most important stuck. part of the process too. This is like the most important part of the customer journey, I'd argue. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. So, Liz, I know you said mindsets. And by the way, buyer repellent will always stick. Like, I know you were the first to use it. It'll always stick. But here's the I thing. Like that. It, I just love if we go back to mindsets, right, it's the, the mindset about CPQ is that it's about getting paid. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Right. But wrong. It's about creating a dope experience that allows money to go from one account to the next. And like, that's the thing when we think about experience, when we talk about sales and marketing and we say the word experience, what do we mean? Oh, we take time and we put together a strategy that makes sense for the person that is going through the things or coming to the thing that they have to come or go through. Many times in organizations, CPQ is let's Let's just slap it on the hind end and try to just figure out what works for us. Well, yeah. I think you bring up a really good point there because I think it's not just about the act of getting paid or a client being able to pay you. Think about what it, I equate it to content style. And when I say content style, I'm talking about brand, voice, tone, all of the little rules that live and exist behind the scenes to make sure that the experience somebody has with your content is cohesive, that it's conveying a whole ass human personality in a way that is in line with your ethos, your values, your moral, all of those different things. It's all these little rules and things that you know your clients and your customers and your prospects don't care about, but they'll notice if it's missing. They'll feel the symptoms of it not being there. And I think about 
about having seamless payment processes is something very similar. If someone is having an extraordinary experience with your business through your products and services, but the moment from an administrative perspective, they have to interact with your business and it hurts, it's going to convey negative things about your business, whether they consciously realize it or not. You will convey, oh, they don't quite have their shit together. Mm. Oh, it'll convey like, how organized are they really? How detail oriented are they really? Max, I'd love to get yeah. your thoughts. So I know well, you had something you wanted to I chime in with here. The other thing you got to remember too, is like when you're configuring uh, not only the price, but you're also creating a quote uh, you got to remember, this is where you are laying down the promise and setting the expectation of the experience that that person is going to have. You're quite literally saying you are going to give us X money and we are going to give you S X experience lined out on this, you know, piece of content that's telling you what you're going to get. And I say content, but you know, whatever quote, you know, invoice, however you want to like, think about it. Right. Um, and that is, you gotta remember, like you're setting this story up that then all these other people behind it are going to have to follow because if you don't that person who paid the money is going to be very angry um really great example of this is something i'm going through right now uh, -oh. uh we hired a company to build i won't say which company it is yet until they resolve this but, uh -oh. um we we hired a company to build a 10 by 10 deck off of our pool uh, uh -oh. and we hired them in August. The salesperson said, you will have it in four weeks. You'll have it for January or for, for and you July. You totally have a deck now, right? I right? have a half put together death trap in my backyard oh my and I have had three project managers quit, you know, and, and nothing's happened since then. Uh, and now we are knocking on December. Right. Um, but some things that happened during that time that were, totally because they didn't have their SHIT together when it came to their configuration, their pricing, or their quoting. I had experiences such as when the first project manager showed up a month late, you know, mind you, uh, he said, hey, so there's no dumpster on this agreement. And I'm like, okay, bud, how the, how the f*** was I supposed to know there needed to be a dumpster <laughs> on the agreement? What are you, why are you even saying that to me? That is not a, my problem. I, I bought a deck, not a dumpster right and so we had to do this whole back and he's like well do you want me to get a dumpster i'm like i don't know do you guys need a dumpster like it was this whole ridiculous thing and then there was a whole nother experience where they, they were supposed to put a gate right because i have oh, children and i don't God. want my children walking onto my my uh my my uh you know porch and and falling into the pool and they didn't have a gate on it and i was like hey guys can we get that gate on there they go oh there's no gate on the agreement I go back and look at the agreement. I said, I see the gate on the agreement. And then I hit the guy back. He's like, you're hundred percent right. This is right after he told me he was going to have to charge me an extra three grand for it. Right. And still nothing has happened since then after like begging them to do it. But they set this expectation. They said, this is what it's going to cost. This is what it's going to expect. And since they botched that process at the beginning, and it's been a complete nightmare since then, I'm having an awful experience with them. And right? here, um, but again, that story was laid out about what was going to happen. I was quoted. I was I was told this is how much you're going to pay. And now everything's a mess because they couldn't take that, distribute it to the necessary people that needed to fulfill on that story that they lined out for me. And now we're in, you know, and here's, we're a, we're a Crete without a power. Here's right? the thing. I got to jump yeah. in here because I know we got a lot of ground we want to cover. But this is a perfect story. And Max, I'm glad you told that because somewhere in that organization, there's a marketer that is like, our brand is so dope. I picked just the right color. Our logo is sweet. I've been working on the website. We've created a great user experience. And meanwhile, because of CPQ and because of the process, Max is sitting here going, and that brand is absolute trash a yep. dumpster fire if you will yeah even though they yeah. don't have a dumpster anyway liz let's move on no absolutely <laughs> i'm feeling like between this episode and the last episode where we had everybody together max you're getting a lot of therapy out you got a lot of a catharsis happening yeah yeah it's been a I rough loving it's been, this a, has been a nightmare i've had a dumpster a and a porta potty in my front yard for months and nothing's happening who it's, doesn't want a porta potty yeah, in their front great. yard i mean that's and a stack of unused <laughs> And a pallet of unused concrete as well. So 
Uh, yeah, if these people don't of figure it out. Concrete. Okay. <laughs> at least you have a pool, though. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. That's <laughs> nice. Look at the bright <laughs> side, Jack says. You got to yeah. yeah, like, sure. chill, chill out. Sure. Chill Let's out. bring it back pool, around, guys. Let's bring it back around. So we talked about <laughs> mindsets, but now I want to get more into tactics. Tactically speaking, what does a great CPQ process look like in HubSpot for a business? And I want to quote George on this because I loved the way you summarized this for me when I was asking what you were hoping most to get out of today's episode. And you said, one might think that it goes something like product equals line item equals deal equals quote equals invoice equals getting paid. But is that the process most organizations starting from scratch and trying to do it in 100% in HubSpot should follow? So let's get tactically into what that looks like. Jack, I'd love to hear from you on that. Yeah. So uh, I'd say at a high level, each business on this front definitely has very specific ideas as, as to how they want to operate. So when it comes to like, what is the best practice? I'm hesitant to prescribe that too, too much, just because people do have strong opinions around things like my buyer really does insist that I send them an invoice. And frankly, folks, if that's what your customers want, I would encourage you all to do that because ultimately we are here to serve customers first and foremost. And so everyone has a different flavor here. Here's my take on it though. So our products tool is fantastic and we're going to continue to make it more awesome. That being said, does everything need to be a product? I don't think so. You can create a custom line item on a quote in about, I don't know, 10 seconds more or less, and then send it out. So to get to like the exact flow that I see, ultimately, if you are selling like on a quote, you're probably having a conversation with your buyer in one way or another. And if you're using HubSpot to manage this, you're probably using our deal pipeline. Create a quote right from that deal pipeline, and then you can get paid on your quotes, folks. You don't have to create a quote and then create an invoice. You can simply just throw a checkout button onto your quote and then get paid right there to reduce the back and forth. I'd also argue this is a lot easier for your buyer and will increase your conversion rates because people are having to click less. Now, one thing we are conscious of is what I just mentioned a couple seconds ago around like sometimes people really do just want an invoice. So let's say you don't, you have a buyer that does not want to get paid on your quote. You can convert a quote into an invoice. This is a pretty new functionality that we have. And so if you wanted to just create that quote and then turn it into an invoice, it is about three clicks to do so because you just convert it and then you finalize it and then you send it. So that's really it. And so getting paid on the quote versus getting paid on the invoice kind of up to your buyer and kind of up to your organization. But I'd say you don't need to jump through too, too, too many hoops. And also you don't need to over index on products as much as it is important. And if you really are reporting on the product level, yes, you should over index on that. Uh, but so many businesses are like, oh, I have this 10,000 product long library. I'm not sure if you really need to do that. And if you do have a product library that big, not sure that you're getting the metrics out of it that you would really want to get. So that's just my quick take on the on the flow and the process for folks. So there's so much that I love about that and then question that I have because I try to put my mindset in the listener or viewer. So what I love about what you said, Jack, is the fact that I can now meet the buyer where they're at because I've had people say, hey, I need a quote so we can get a signature on it and then you know we'll go from there. Okay, sweet, I'm gonna quote them and then I'm gonna invoice. I've literally had people after having a sales conversation be like, dope, that's what I want, send me an invoice. Now in HubSpot, I can do it either way. The flexibilities, like simplify is a word we used in here. Flexibility for you as the person who is selling the thing is amazing. Now, here's the thing though, because when you said like products versus just a custom line item, in your mind or the team's mind, is there a reason when to product and a reason when not to product? Like what? what's the mindset around that? Because again, I know you mentioned kind of reporting and stuff like that, but you know, somebody could go all willy nilly and do just custom line items all day long and, and survive, get paid, but maybe you need structure. Like Jack, what is like dive deeper into products for us in, in that kind of thought? It's a good question. And Max, as someone who has had your hands all over the tools for a long time now, mm -hmm. be curious your take on this here as well. I guess my quick take is if your product library is approaching triple digits, and this is a little bit arbitrary, but if you have hundreds and hundreds of products in a given product library, and you want to take a step back and say, what are my top selling products? And all of your top selling products are like, I have about 
$50, again, kind of an arbitrary number, but like a low amount and there are like 60 of them. Is that really like your top products? Like, is that really informing your business and like product combinations that people are most likely to buy? And so I'd say as you're thinking about your pricing and packaging, in a world where you have things like bronze, silver, and gold packages, which there's a lot to be said for that because that is nice and simple for you and for your buyers and can give you a lot of the data that you would need to get. I do recognize that some businesses have some more complexity in things. So for example, let's say you're a pro services business and you have completely different packages for just about every single buyer that you have. I probably wouldn't index as much on the product side of things, more on the payment object, more on the deal object, more on the invoice object, for example. And so I'd say it kind of depends based upon how complex your pricing and packaging is. Once you start getting to like 100 plus products, though, that may be a little too complicated. Max, I'm curious your take, though. Yeah. So, wait, George, is the question like when should something be a product in the product library? Is that like kind of yeah. what you're distilling? Yeah, because and yeah, because it gets confusing, right? First and, and back. So I'll let you go. But like the, fir- <laughs> the first thing that we have to teach people is that product is line item. Well, that, yeah. that's confusing. Yeah. So then well, if I'm going to add yeah. a line item or several line items to a deal, do I need to just do it as a product or not a product? And when should it be a product? Yeah. That's the question. Yeah, totally. So the, the way I think of it is like products are things you sell. A line item is an instance of you selling that thing and a certain quantity of it to somebody. Right. Um, you know, so that that's kind of more the if, if anyone is having confusion over like, is it a product or is it a line item? Like, you know, line items are where products meet deals, right? Like that's, you know, I sold five of these products. Like that is a line item, right? When something should be a line item, I think you got to think about what's the utility of it being in there, right? Um, The utility of it is usually around three different things. One, I can easily add to a quote, right? So if it's something that needs to show up as its own thing, on a quote, and it's very important that it shows up as its own thing with its own price, then you do that, right? But like, there are situations where it could be like, well, you know, if I'm, you know, they actually kind of did it on this quote that they gave me, right? Like they didn't say you're buying all of these different nuts and bolts for this gate. They called it a gate package and it was X amount of dollars, right? Even though there's like a bunch of things in there, right? So I think there are plenty of situations where you might say, hey, if it's something that can be bundled up with other stuff, do that as much as you can to reduce the amount of line items that you have. But if it's something that someone needs to see, how much does this one thing cost? And it's on a quote, that's a good reason to have it. The other thing too, is you got to think about reporting, right? If you care how much of something you sell and you want to report on it, you got to remember line items are object by themselves. They're objects in a database. They're sitting in a table. You can build reports off of them, right? So I mean, if reporting on how much of something you are selling is important to you, you might want to have it as a product that shows up as a line item on a deal, right? Yeah. And it's just on top of that, if you want to do reporting at the product level itself, right? That also might be a reason why you want to have it in there. So, you know, it really kind of depends. But if it If you check any of those boxes, I think it makes sense to turn something into a product in your product library. So I got to dive in here because I was looking at the chat, which I love that we have live uh, viewers and we have this chat that we can look at. And I love, uh, by the way, I love Chad. Uh, Chad is always showing up in the chat pane. Um, But he said it really ties back to your accounting platform. And here's one thing that I've noticed as I've helped clients with the CPQ journey is that many times they forget that there's an accountant and an accounting platform that they probably need to be talking to when making the decisions of how they're going to actually set CPQ up and how they're going to integrate it with the life of that human and the life of that software. (laughs) So this is a call out to everybody. If you're doing this and you haven't had or you're going to do this and you haven't scheduled a call with the accounting firm or accountant to talk through the mess of getting them to talk together with each other in a way that makes sense because that's the true end result, then do it. And by the way, you can send Chad the check uh, that he deserves because he brought it up in the chat. <laughs> yeah. Hashtag check. checks for Chad. Check for um, Chad. For Chad. Oh, like All right, payments. I want to switch gears a little Chad bit check. here, guys. Well, wait, wait, Liz, I had an answer to your other question. I had an answer to your other you question. You had an so. answer to my other question. Oh, you yeah. remember they were talking? 
Let's do it. Yeah, remember, it I'm taking I'm taking my ADHD medicine, so I'm actually paying attention now. It's great. I'm so proud um, of you. There's yeah. so much growth happening right here, right yeah, now. Yeah, and what's cool is like I totally made up this answer on the spot because I didn't get to see the stock until we started. Um, so you had said, what is a good CPQ process look like in HubSpot for a business? So um, I, 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 I'm calling this uh, quadruple A. So it's four words that start with A that I think Whoa. make for a good CPQ process. Uh, and that is accurate, adaptable, adoptable, and automated where it makes sense, right? Everything so, could have been a puppy until that way. last one. I like that. Everything could have what? Been a puppy? I said everything could have been a puppy until that last one. I don't think we're going to automate a puppy. Oh, no, yeah, yeah. No, you hopefully Robot not. dog? <laughs> Maybe. Um, so accurate, right? Obviously, how, how are you keeping that information up to date? Are you quoting people the correct price? Are the prices correct to begin with? Um, you know, do the prices need to change when, um, you know, uh, other, you know, other factors are being considered, right? Like, does someone get some sort of loyalty pricing, volume pricing? Like, so obviously you're dealing with numbers. It has to be accurate, right? Um, adaptable. There are going to be situations where you sell maybe a little bit differently than you normally do. Case in point, the other day we had a partner come to us uh, and say, hey, uh, could you do bundle pricing on these different apps? And while we were like, sure, we'd love to, our salesperson was like, how the f*** am I going to do that with the way that things are currently set up? I have no way of like doing an audible and selling, you know, in a way that's not currently set up for me to do right so when you think adaptable it's like what are you doing in situations where when things aren't perfectly you know uh being sold the way that they're kind of always meant to and in the box that you envisioned it how can you react to that and is it adaptable enough to be able to do one-offs here or there or like you know quote things a little bit differently um adoptable are, are your, is your team actually going to use it? Is it easy for them to understand? Are they, are, are the tools like easy to navigate is all the information they need to put together this proposal, this quote, this invoice, whatever you want to call it. Is it at their fingertips? And are they not trudging through three different tools in order to be able to do that? Um, and then is it automated where it needs to be? Right? So for example, there's many ways you can think about automation when it comes to like, you know, quotes and invoices and things like that in HubSpot, right? A couple of things come into mind. Um, are you automatically invoicing people? Are you automating the process of even just signing a quote or, you know, paying for it? Like, how are you automating how these things are happening? Am I moving a deal to a certain stage in it? Is it automatically sending an invoice to someone or, you know, whatever it may be? I want to shout out like another app builder on the HubSpot app marketplace that I think is super relevant to this conversation. There's a gentleman named Harry Bevins. He has a company called Weave and Blend, and he just released one of the coolest apps I've ever seen that has to do with line items in HubSpot. It's called Line Pilot. What it allows you to do is it allows you to just change object um, properties on a deal and it automatically generates all the line items for you dynamically using rules. It's one of the craziest things I've ever seen. But that actually takes that automation and adoptability thing because it makes it much easier for your sales reps to just check a couple of boxes or, you know, choose a couple options on some properties. And all of a sudden, all the work that you usually do clicking through line items, this stuff's just automatically added in there, right? So it's it's a little bit easier to do. And of course, there's some things you're not automating too, right? Like the, you keep that in mind. Just because you can doesn't mean you always have to. But yeah, I would think of that. Is it accurate? Is it adaptable? Adoptable? And automated where it needs to be. That's Take that ADHD. I love the four A's. That's incredible. <laughs> the four A's. I never. I like the four A's no. we we needed but never knew we wanted. All right. Yeah. So Max, now let's dig in, Jack. Can I, can I add something on top of that? Yeah, always, absolutely. Always if it starts so, with A, sure. If it doesn't start with A, just keep your mouth shut, out. Jack. It's gone <laughs> now, the... now, now I'm trying. Now I'm no, trying no, to you're good. You're something. Good. I don't know if I'm that great. I don't know. I don't don't force it. You're fine. Medicine, Max. I, I need some of that. I'll take some. No. Uh, uh, Harry, Harry's awesome. I actually connected with Harry a couple of weeks ago. We blended. Such it's a, a totally legit company. And what's really cool to me is so many of our partners are starting to get into this commerce space. And like when I started at HubSpot and really what HubSpot was built upon was like, we had all of these marketing agencies. It's been really cool to see all of our partners really transform into CRM integrators and migrations. And now like a lot of app development, especially in the commerce space. And ultimately I think that this is, and I hope that this is a function of this commerce space kind of changing. For so long, it's just lived in the back office in the accounting system, for example. And what we're ultimately talking about it 
about here is like bringing this forward into the CRM. And so just like piggybacking off of the product conversation, let's say, if all of that is always just siloed in your accounting system, for example, you're not able to answer questions like, okay, what, what folks in this industry, what are they most likely to buy? Folks who came from this specific source of ours, what are they most likely to buy? You're able to answer a lot of more robust conversations about your business when you bring your customer and your commerce data together. So it's been cool to see the evolution of our partner network as we really do bring commerce and CRM efforts together. So thanks for giving me that time there. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that. But like, yeah. I think that is ultimately the floor of everything that we're chatting about. And things are changing too, which is mm -hmm. great. It's time for change. First of all, absolutely. There's a reason why we had you here and it's to drop knowledge bombs like that. Now, I do want to move us forward a bit here. So I want to move away from the CPQ process holistically and now talk a bit more about some of the secret sauce, the, the hidden gems of features that live inside the Commerce Hub. For example, do people even realize that there's a coupon functionality in HubSpot? So Jack, I'd, I'd love for you to shine a spotlight on some of the pieces of the hub that folks might be missing. Yep. Always love a question like this. So just because we've been chatting CPQ, I'll mention a couple of things on that front. I feel like a lot of folks are unaware of how robust our custom quote tool can be. You can really create some pretty fancy schmancy quotes on our platform. Uh, and so look at our default um, quotes, quote templates that we provide, but you can definitely roll up your sleeve and get pretty intense on that front if you'd like. We also, of course, have a lot of integrations as well that can accomplish you know, whatever really you would need on that front. Another thing about our quotes tool that I feel like folks are often unaware of is within our custom quote template, you can actually use personalization tokens. That's something that can make quotes personalized, obviously, but ultimately it can also save you and your team a tremendous amount of time when it comes to just typing in data. So that's one of those things that I feel like a lot of folks are unaware of, and I wish more people knew about on the quotes side of things. <laughs> obviously, discount codes, awesome, excited for that. We're probably going to do a little bit more work on the discount code side of things next year when it comes to like limited usage or time bounds and things like that. Uh, a couple of other things, payments and meetings. You can literally, I would argue the easiest thing that any human being can sell is their time. That yeah. is the definition of what connecting a payment link to a meetings link looks like. And I know that like, you know, George, Max, like a lot of folks who talk about HubSpot all the time, as someone who has spoken to, I don't know, eight, nine, 10,000 customers in my time here, there are so many people out there who would spend a couple hundred bucks to just chat with you for like an hour. And so just put it out there on your website, get paid. That's something that I think a lot of folks are unaware of that is just such lean, low hanging fruit for any business. And then the last one that I'd call out is probably optional products. So what that looks like on a given payment link is you have essentially a given product line item and then an add button next to it. It's not a full-fledged like Shopify shopping cart by any means, nor are we really trying to solve for that specific use case in full transparency, but it does get us closer to like a shopping cart and it really is like upsells to its core. So those are just a few of those features that I think are absolutely awesome. And when I talk to, to folks who are using Commerce Hub, they see that and they're like, oh, I wish I knew about that because I could be making more money if I did. Okay, yeah. so I got to jump in here for a second. And then, Max, it seems like you might be chomping at the bit to say something, too. But, Jack, because you brought up uh, payments in meetings, the other day I was working on something, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a HubSpot wish list item. Oh, my God, Jack is going to be on the podcast. I can talk to him about it. Dude, payments in the new CTAs tool to be able uh -huh. to click a button and pop up a CTA and to be able to say, instead of just a form or a button to be able to say, I want to drag this payment link, just like a payment button into a CTA tool. Whoo! Talk about a great user experience for getting paid on your website. I'm just saying it would be dope. Can I also add payments and forms? Oh too? yeah. So you can essentially turn like a submit button into a checkout button. Yeah. You can also connect multiple payment links to a given form as yeah. well. So that's one of those things that like the folks who use it love it, but it kind of can fly under the forms radar mm. to a degree. Yeah. Max. 
I wasn't really chomping at the bit to say anything good. It's all self-serving. I was just going to say, I do have one of those paid payment links sitting right on maxjacobcohen.com <laughs> if anyone wants to go check it out. So, you know, if you're listening, shill, my time shill, is just shill, a shill, meeting shill. link away. Just yep. a meeting link away, baby. Yep. Yep. That's just that's, that's just shilling for Max, you. though. I don't no. I don't hate that, by the way. I don't. But well, it took, I mean, well, it took us 40 minutes for anybody to shill. I think that's pretty yeah. good. Go us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I remember I was still I was still in SC when that when that feature came out and I was like the running joke was like, all right, guys, I'm gonna start charging 50 bucks for any sales reps that want to get on my calendar. But, you know, <laughs> never. That, that one didn't that go. Didn't over you would have well. made a lot of money, Max. You should have yeah. done it. I know. You I know. Made a lot of money. I mean, well, I should I, probably do it right now. Like if any SC, I mean, any any HubSpot sales reps need me to SC a deal for you. Just use my link. All right. Actually, I want to dig into a HubSpot payments a little bit more. We've already talked about the new CTA tool. We've talked about the way you can use it in forms. But what are some of the other cool places and ways you can use HubSpot payments, Jack? Jack, can so I ask something is- real quick? Did did yeah. e-signatures get an update recently? Because I see a big fancy new badge next to e-signatures. So e-signatures have gotten haven't gotten a giant refresh, but we've been moving down the like pricing and packaging. Of it, so like now, like a lot, a lot more folks can use it with without the major restrictions. Yeah. Uh, no major changes. Are you sure you're seeing it on the e signature part specifically? Max? I'm looking at, at the quotes e signature, and right next to it, it says new. Uh, well, so we have this new functionality around like displaying information on the quote oh, side of things. Okay. Uh, just so everybody knows Max, out detective. there. Yeah, just so everybody knows, I like pizza. I do too. I love pizza. All right. So HubSpot what? payment. Dude, the dude, the question was, hey Jack, what other cool places can you uh use uh HubSpot hey, payment? Hey guys, what's this new tag? <laughs> the, but, no, are you so sure you took your ADD is, medication today? It's literally because on there quotes. Is, there is high level squirrel at like oh my God. vibes happening right now i'm putting i'm literally gonna paste this into what i'm i'm putting it in our slack oh channel and you can see new next to each signatures <laughs> so i was curious well so we have like more more like tracking around the e-signature usage that that could be what we're referring to and just for the record i think chicago pizza beats pizza, yes. pizza 10 out of 10 times so if we're talking i'm pizza, here for new haven Detroit, thin crust. thank you very much frank pepe's not bad. Oh, yeah. Frank yeah. Pepe's, dude. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <sighs> All right. Where else can we use no, payments? Though? Jack, Where else can we use payments? Totally brand new so, question. What are the different ways we can use HubSpot payments? <laughs> so uh, this is this entire like burdening, like the growing space in the B2B area called embedded payments. It isn't just HubSpot that uses that term. Uh it, it's something that's growing pretty pretty quickly. So meetings forms for sure. CTA is absolutely a very close connection there as well. Uh, and then when it comes to marketing emails, when it comes to our CMS as well, you folks will see a payment module right there on the left that you can drag and drop right on over to make you know getting paid on your website very, very easy. So you do not need to be able to write code by any means. You simply need to know how to drag and drop. And that's pretty much it. Also in places like the extensions that you can use, like your email extensions, as well as conversations too. So like, for example, let's say you have a support rep talking to someone and they're like, hey, I really, really want to buy more products. It's so inefficient for that support rep to then go to their back office and be like, hey folks, here's what they want. Let's go ahead and send them an invoice and then obviously have zero visibility into that invoice. Instead, right where they're working right there, drop a payment link and ship it. And so we want to make folks a lot more efficient on this front. And I really, really, really would love to see a lot more businesses open up completely new revenue streams here. I don't know about you all, but like if I have 10 bucks coming into my account that I didn't previously anticipate, great, I'll take it. And if you can just open up some new revenue by selling differently online and productize your services, one thing I always fall back on is we have uh, like, I've seen divorce lawyers selling their services online without talking to anyone. If a given divorce lawyer can do it, you all can too. Yeah, so- That's quite the equivalency. I never yeah. thought I would ever do <laughs> Let's all learn from divorce I, lawyers. George, go ahead. Yeah, so <laughs> a couple of things I wanna just throw out here. The Having the power to have payments inside of your Gmail or your Outlook, I hope people just take time to realize how powerful that is for the conversations that you're gonna have. 
Now, again, this might be the wish list item uh, episode that <laughs> that I'm uh, going to have here, because when I think about communication and I think about the fact that I can put it in side of my Gmail or my Outlook, what I wish was possible is that I could actually create a HubSpot template because I can insert a snippet, a document, a meeting link, a video. I wish that I could create a HubSpot template that I could add a payment to as well, saving my sales rep, AKA myself, the time of actually needing to even add that because it was already in there, right? So again, I'm not poo-pooing on anything. I'm saying these are all awesome places, but HubSpot, Jack Cooper Smith and team, please continue <laughs> to find more places where we can leverage payments inside of HubSpot. Well, can you do like a payment George, link? You're you can see drop a payment link into it. Link. Dude, dude, <laughs> don't pee on my parade. I want there I'm to not. be insert and under insert, insert payment, insert link. payment yeah. link. Yeah. That'd Max's cool. SE hat. Max, I was going to say. Bro, oh, just drop the URL in, George. <laughs> Yeah, I think here's here's like another I think a, a bigger a bigger thing where I'm like, wow, it's cool. We finally got here now. Right. Like and I kind of compare it to when Service Hub first came out. Right. Where, you know, HubSpot always preached a track engaged delight. Right. As like the inbound methodology. And, yeah, I know for anyone like before that it was what, a track convert close delight. But, it, you know, if you think about it, it was still all the same thing. Right. Um, we knew delight was so important, but we never had tools to actually help people do it. We had like, you could kind of do it with like the marketing hub a little bit, but when we had the service hub, you could finally truly attract engaged delight, right? I think what's neat about quotes, not quotes, sorry, invoices finally becoming their own object, right? Is when you think about the basic motions of payments in HubSpot, we have a way to tell you how much it's going to cost. That's a quote, tell you how much you owe us, which is an invoice and tell you how much you paid, which is the receipt after you get paid. So it's like those major forms of paper or what we used to represent with paper, right? Those now all have their proper digital space within HubSpot, right? And you no longer have to do this fun game of like, well, it's a quote. But it's a quote with a payment link on it. So it's kind of like quote 0.5, but it's not quite an invoice because it doesn't say invoice, right? Which a lot of people like, I'm sure, Jack, you saw plenty of people saying, well, let's just do a custom quote so template much. and call it an invoice, right? Um, it's like now all of those things, even if you use them in slightly different ways, right? I think us being in the digital age now, it's more common that we see a quote with a payment link at the bottom. Whereas like you look back, I don't know how many years that's not happening. Right. Um, but, you know, now it's just I just think it's neat that like we're still enabling those businesses that sell in that way where it's like, here's the quote that's just for you to look at, and know how much it costs. It's maybe for you to sign it. And then you're you're used to getting an invoice from us. We can still do that if that's something that you want to do. Right. We're not totally forcing you to be in this digital age where we're telling your your I don't know, your uh, your your accounts receivable or payable or whoever it is. Oh, you got to sign this quote thing when you're expecting an invoice, right? Like it has those three major motions now. What what you're going to pay, what you owe us, and what you did pay. It's all there. I think that's just I cool. That. All right. It shouldn't be hard to get paid. Like no. once you've gotten to that finish line, it shouldn't be hard to get paid. No. Mm -mm. no. That's the part of the process that shouldn't hurt. And then we talked about that at the beginning of how important it is to make sure that part of the process is seamless. Um, before, before we say goodbye to all the daylight hours and our time together here with Ugh. Jack, there is one other big topic I want to make sure that we cover today, and that's invoicing. Why should folks be invoicing through HubSpot versus other platforms? What makes it so special, so awesome, so happy in HubSpot? I Particularly, by the way, for question. those of us who use QuickBooks. Like that, that, because I know a yep. lot of folks who are still on that bandwagon. Totally. Well, so part of your question as well is... Uh, like the undercurrent of it, I guess, is like, what is the relationship between a given invoice and HubSpot and a given invoice in an accounting system? So I recognize that. I, I promise I'll tackle that. I'd say at a high level, though, uh, ComSub is really looking to solve for three use cases more than anything. Let you all get paid faster, increase your revenue, and save time. Like every time that we release a feature, we're like, how does this help someone get paid faster, increase their revenue, or save their time? I say these words all day, every day, because that's really what we're um, relying upon. And you all have heard me say this a couple of times throughout this conversation around 
why go knock on your back office's door to say, hey, can you create an invoice and send it out? You're able to just create it within HubSpot and then distribute it in a few clicks. Now, there's also an element of a lot of the back office folks being like, oof, I don't know if I want to open this door wide to every single person in my company, which is also understandable. But because of that, they're constantly answering the questions like, yeah, I sent it out. No, they haven't paid it yet. And so there's just a lot of inefficiencies around that as well. So a lot of this boils down to being able to get paid fast and also have the visibility that you all need. So like Max, I know you would always pay your invoices on time, for example, no doubt about it. But these project managers that you've been working with on your deck, let's say that like they sent you an invoice and you just like didn't pay it for whatever reason, maybe uh, you know the email bounced or something like that. Yeah. There are so many businesses I've spoken to that are like, you know what? I was halfway through this giant project this giant deck that Max is building here next to his pool. Oh, I didn't realize he didn't actually pay the invoice. And now I'm having cash flow problems. I've heard that story so many times. Whereas if you're just living within HubSpot, you can see all of that information right there. So there are a lot of benefits to the visibility of everything within our system. There are also a lot of benefits to being able to just create an invoice and send it without having to rely on 15 other people within your organization. Now, I'm sure a lot of you all are hearing this and being like, okay, that's great. I need to really make sure, though, that I have all of this accurate information in my accounting system so that I can pay my taxes and close my books and run my business. I'm happy to say that we do indeed have a QuickBooks integration, Zero and NetSuite. It is the Commerce Hub team's number one priority over the next handful of months, though, to really beef up these accounting integrations for some quick context, folks. We've had HubSpot payments for a couple of years now, but the invoice object and the invoice artifact to get paid is relatively new. So as we've really leaned into invoicing and invested in invoicing, we realized that if you're going to have invoice one, two, three within HubSpot that's open, we need to be able to sync it over to QuickBooks and have invoice one, two, three open. When it's paid within HubSpot, it needs to be paid within QuickBooks. Essentially, what we really just need is the two systems to talk to each other in real time with the same invoice number. That's the direction that we're really pointed in. It's just a bi-directional invoice sync. We're really prioritizing QuickBooks, NetSuite, Sage, Zero. Well, I'm sure we'll get to more, but just wanted to give you all a little insight as to what my team is thinking about nowadays and how this plays into invoicing more broadly. George and Max, what are you thinking there? I see you both, you're both like very solemnly like head nodding and processing. This is a price you both have been this, this whole episode. What's going on over there? Well, so I, my, my, my brain went sideways, right? Because I did uh, do a little snoopy snoopy earlier in the week, or maybe it was even today. It all runs together. And I saw something that I don't know if I have seen it before and then, but maybe it was there, maybe it wasn't. And I was literally asking myself, should I ask Jack if it's always been there? Should I ask Jack if it's something new? Should I ask Jack when people should actually use it? Because I think it's probably a confusing part to the process. Does anybody care? I'll just get to it. Jack, in invoices, in, in settings, there's add tax ID to invoices. Like I didn't even know I could add a tax ID. Then I'm curious of when I would want or need to add a tax ID. Is this a physical product because they buy it in North Carolina? Is this a service? Like now all of a sudden I need to know the law a little bit. And I don't even know, Matt, Jack, if you're like, you could be like, bro, um, a, consult your a lawyer or something. But I just saw it and I'm like, is that new? Oh, yeah, but I asked about new. e-signatures and get crucified. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tax ID. <laughs> just kidding. I was giving you shit. I know. Hey, I, wait, I, I love the attention to detail, first of all. Yes, it is a new feature. I think that this is one of those things where in general, like you will know if you need to have it is, is I guess kind of how I'd couch it. So did we send a giant email to every single user when we shipped this feature? I'll be honest, we didn't. But at the same time, if you're if you're a given business and you think that you need this, you probably do. Throw it right on there and then you can call it a day. Oh, it's interesting, Chad. We have a lot to be we have a lot more on invoicing though. Sorry to interrupt you, George, yeah. but like we are still 
uh, I'll use a baseball analogy. I'm sure we're in like the third or fourth inning of invoices. We have a lot more to do. And ultimately it's along the lines of allowing for you all to get paid the way that you want and the way that your buyers want. So stay tuned for more on invoicing that product has, has, uh, some more investment coming on as well. Uh, I promise. I'll take it all. I'll take it all. And it's interesting because, again, I'm watching the chat pane. Again, it's chat. My dude, everybody actually, Salim, Chris, everybody's on fire in there. But uh, Chad says, um, if you're in Canada, every single line item needs its own tax ID, which is interesting because then all of a sudden I'm like, is this part of or the heading in the direction of that I know eventually payments is not just going to be U.S. only? Is this like a stepping stone to actually releasing payments to the global world? Anyway, I digress. Liz, go ahead. I have a little bit to, I have a little yeah, bit I, I can say it. on that oh. if y'all are curious. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. Look at Max's face. Oh, okay. <laughs> couple more months. couple more months. We are pretty darn close to expanding Commerce Hub outside of the United States. And I'll give you all just a little bit of a, a sneak peek on this here. Uh, this isn't as much a which country are we going to next. Instead, we're really going to be focusing on unlocking currencies and payment methods as well. Now, folks, you all have heard us talk about HubSpot payments and Commerce Hub. I'll just like quickly clear the air on the difference between the two. If you all do have any like questions on that or if you're asking yourself that, Commerce Hub is the broader product. HubSpot payments is a way to power Commerce Hub. I think about it like an engine. And so there's nothing to purchase with Commerce Hub. It's not like $100 a month, for example. It's a consumption-based model where you simply pay processing fees. So instead of buying Commerce Hub, you select an engine to power Commerce Hub. HubSpot Payments is one of them. Stripe Payment Processing is the other one. So you can plug in Stripe and then use Commerce Hub. Now, we're going to be using that in order to expand internationally. And so give us just a couple more months, folks. It is November of 2023. Give us a couple more months, and I'm sure uh, you'll like I hope that you'll like what we're uh, rolling out. That's such a... You heard it here first on Hub Heroes, folks. That's right. All right. Last question. George, Max, and Jack, what are your hopes and dreams for B2B e-commerce capabilities? What are we hoping to see in the future? I hope I see more people using it to power the rest of their like flywheel, right? This is a frustrating thing that I run into selling Zebra because a lot of folks come to us because they have a hyper complicated way they want to sell. And they're like, I want to be able to uh, uh, charge someone uh, X amount on the first day and then start a subscription and I want to put it on a quote. And they just, all they're caring about is like the transaction. I am having a hard time getting people to see the bigger picture of saying, when you have your commerce data in HubSpot, and this is irregardless if it's like a Zebra or you're doing this with HubSpot payments, like, let's remember you have things like subscriptions and records of people paying you in different ways, whether it's Stripe transactions or HubSpot payments or whatever it is. That is a lot of really good data that you can power all these other parts of like the customer experience with, right? How are you onboarding new people when they buy new things? How are you, you know, trying to win back folks that cancel stuff or are no longer customers? How are you thoughtfully segmenting your audience by things that they've purchased in the past in order to create smart, thoughtful, upsell and cross-sell opportunities? How are you enabling your support people down the road to do refunds or be able to see how much money has someone actually spent with us? So maybe we might, you know, do some different stuff for them, whatever it may be, right? Like all this commerce stuff spreads across the entire customer experience. It's not just this like narrow sales thing. And the thing that I see that just disheartens me a lot with customers is that so many of them are just hyper focusing on the, how do we just like set something up so we just get paid? Not how do we take this history and data that we have about how people are giving us money and when they're giving us money and when they stop giving us money to then inform the rest of this experience that we could be providing for them. So not necessarily a wish for the tool because the tool's got a lot of stuff that lets you do that already right? It's more so a wish for the folks that are using it, the operators, and also folks like us who are encouraging those folks how they use it, right? It's to think of different ways to like 
use that. That's not just how do you get paid as quickly as possible and then it stops there. I love that. I hope. George? I love that. Uh, I'll let Jack go. You want to let Jack go? Yeah. So, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll take that, Mike. So, uh, I guess three three things. I'd love to see smaller tech stacks. It, like There are just so many businesses that use a bajillion tools to run their business. And I'd love to see a world where folks can consolidate and simplify. So I you know, argue against that one in so many ways. I'd love to see smaller tech stacks. I'd love to see new revenue streams for businesses. So one thing that our former uh, chief product officer would mention is HubSpot builds software. We also build careers as well. And like what I always took that as is we can allow for you and your company to be a champion in your company by pushing for the modernization of your firm into the internet era. In internet era. I'd love to see a world where you all are you know, productizing your products or services and selling them online in a little bit of a different way. And folks, if you and your business, if you're the chief marketing officer, or the chief sales officer, for example, and you can open up a completely new, very efficient revenue stream, I'd love to see more and more of that happening. And I think that's the way that the world is pointing in so many ways. And then the last thing I'd really love to see is the end of this front af- front office, back office fallacy, like right now there's this giant wall between the two. I'd love to see that wall come down a little bit more, have a nice integration data flow between those two systems and really build out a little bit more of a middle office where your CRM is not only the center of gravity for your customers, but for your customers and your commerce motion. So I'd love to break down that wall a little bit. Those are the three things that come to mind immediately. I love it. I love it so much. Yeah, Liz. So it's funny because I'm going to go back to how you kind of positioned this. Um, And by the way, there's somebody that I want to have on the podcast in the future to talk about B2B (laughs) e-commerce. Because let's be honest, most people you'd say that to and they're like, isn't that one of them? their oxymoron things. Uh, Isn't B2C (laughs) e-commerce? Like, what do you mean B2B e-commerce? And so when I think about this conversation, one, I want to be one of the humans that helps accelerate the thought of these simple words. Is it possible? Because so many people are stuck in the, well, this is the way that we've always done it. So that's the way that we're going to continue to do it. And when you have companies that are innovating like HubSpot and all the app ecosystem folks that even make HubSpot more powerful than HubSpot originally is, you have to ask yourself, can we work, can we build, can we own a company that dives into the philosophy of, is it possible? Is it possible that we get paid in an easy way? Is it possible that we provide a great user experience? Is it possible that the accountant isn't throwing the stapler at the marketer's forehead? Is it possible? And dare I say, yes. Yes, it is. Well, on that note, Jack, I can't believe I'm going to say this, guys, but I think in the new year, we're going to have to do a third Commerce Hub episode because we still have like 18 things on my list that I want to talk about. Like, I want to talk about reporting. I want to talk about subscriptions. Like, your girl still has questions. So, Jack, we are definitely going to be having you back on in the new year, but... Thank you so much once again for joining us to our listeners at home. Thank you for tuning in each and every week. Make sure to leave us a review on your preferred podcast platform. And Max and George, I love you guys. And we'll talk to everybody next week. Okay, Hub Heroes, we've reached the end of another episode. Will Lord Lack continue to loom over the community, or will we be able to defeat him in the next episode of the Hub Heroes podcast? Make sure you tune in and find out in the next episode. Make sure you head over to thehubheroes.com to get the latest episodes and become part of the League of Heroes. FYI, if you're part of the League of Heroes, you'll get the show notes right in your inbox, and they come with some hidden power up potential as well make sure you share this podcast with a friend leave a review if you like what you're listening to and use the hashtag hashtag hub Euros podcast on any of the socials and let us know what strategy conversation you'd like to listen into next until next time when we meet and combine our forces remember to be a happy helpful humble human and of course always be looking for a way to be someone's hero